Hey there, my name's Sarah, and this video is about easily creating rotational symmetry in Clip Studio Paint. Think like a pinwheel. Let's start by creating a new canvas at 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels, with a resolution of 72 dpi since this will be digital only, and a white paper color. Click OK. Make sure you're on layer 1. Go to the Ruler tool, and select the Symmetrical Ruler subtool. By default, it's set up to create what's called bilateral symmetry, where there's one line and anything you draw appears on both sides of it. Change the number of lines, and you get that same type of mirrored symmetry in more dimensions. But uncheck the box that says Line Symmetry, and now you're in the realm of rotational symmetry. It's no longer mirrored, but if you rotate the object, it's the same on each side. In fact, you can't even mirror with an odd number of lines, so line symmetry is simply grayed out. My pinwheel will have five veins, but you can do as many as you want. Just make sure line symmetry is off. Be sure to hold down Shift as you create the ruler to keep its starting line perfectly vertical. To center the ruler, go to the Operation tool, and make sure the Object subtool is selected. Click the ruler to select it. In CSP version 2.0 or higher, go to Window, and open the Align Distribute tool. Set Alignment Base to Canvas. Click Align Horizontal Centers, and then Align Vertical Centers. Boom! Centered. For older versions, change the Center X and Center Y values to half that of your canvas, in this case, 600 and 600. Notice the ruler icon that now appears on Layer 1. I'll rename this layer to Sketch, and turn on its layer color in the default blue. Go to the Pencil tool, and try it out. Now, Symmetry should be enabled by default, but if it isn't working, open the Subtool Detail palette by clicking the wrench, go to Correction, and tick Enable Snapping. Go ahead and sketch one vein of your pinwheel. Take your time. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Remember that pinwheels have this internal curved shape to capture the air that makes them spin. For the outline, I'm going to create a new vector layer, and rename it to Line Art. The ruler disappeared, but we still need it for this step. On your sketch layer, right-click directly on the ruler icon and choose Show in All Layers. Return to the Line Art layer. Choose the Pen tool and the G-Pen subtool. Draw the pinwheel vein using the sketch as a guide. Overlaps are fine. This part is easiest with a graphics tablet, but if you're drawing with a mouse, go into the Subtool Detail palette, under Correction, and turn on Post Correction. Experiment with the values, but it's okay to turn it all the way up. When you're finished drawing a line, it will correct it to be much smoother. Let's take care of the overlaps. Go to the Eraser tool, and select the Vector subtool. Now, I happen to know this one doesn't work with rulers by default, so be sure to turn snapping on like I showed you before. Draw a quick slash across an overlapped line. Like magic, the vector eraser removes it from all the veins. This is just part of what's so cool about vector layers. Finish cleaning up any overlaps in your line art. We'll fix up the middle next. Go to the Figure tool, and select the Ellipse subtool. Drag out a circle. Well, that's cool, but not exactly what we want. To disable the Symmetry Ruler, you can just hide the whole sketch layer since we're done with it. Okay, now drag out a circle the size you want for your pinwheel center. 
Use Align Distribute to center it. Then use the Vector Eraser to remove the extra lines. To color it, let's first change our line art layer to a reference layer. I'll show you why in a moment. Create a new raster layer and drag it underneath the line art. Name it Color. Go to the Fill tool and be sure you're on the Refer Other Layers subtool. If it's not already, change Refer Multiple to Reference Layer. Select your first color. I'll start with a nice bright red. Click one of the veins. Because the Fill tool is set up to refer to that reference layer, it only colors within those lines. I'll use a slightly darker red for the back part of this vein, and then choose different colors to fill in the other veins. Finally, a slightly off-white color for the center. We could stop there, but I want to add some shadow. Let's make a new raster layer, and call it Shading. I'll change the blending mode to Multiply. Then go back to the color layer. Go to the Auto Select tool, and make sure it's set to the Refer to Editing Layer Only subtool. Click to select just the dark part of one of the veins. Hold Shift and click on each of the other dark parts, which will add to the selection. Return to the new shading layer. Let's briefly re-enable the sketch layer with the Symmetry Ruler. Select the Airbrush tool, and be sure the Soft subtool is selected. Choose a light, desaturated blue color. Lightly brush the color around the edge where the front part of the vein covers the back. And again, if it's not working with symmetry, you know the drill by now. Go back to the Color layer and the Auto Select tool, and click once in the center to select it. Use Ctrl Shift I to invert the selection. Back to the Shading layer and the Airbrush tool, and add just a little shading around the center. Use Ctrl D to deselect, and hide the sketch layer and symmetry ruler again. For organization, I like to group related layers into a layer folder. Select the first pinwheel layer, hold Shift, and click the last one. Now all three are selected. Drag them all up onto the New Layer Folder button, and a new folder is created with them already in it. Name the folder just like you'd name a layer. Just a couple final details, and we're done. Let's make a second folder for the handle. Just click the New Layer Folder button. Drag it under the Pinwheel folder, and name it Handle. Create a new vector layer named Liner. Change your color back to black. A quick shortcut for this is to press the D key. Go to the Figure tool and choose the Rectangle subtool. Drag out the shape of the handle. If you need to, center it with the Align Distribute tools. Just like I did with the pinwheel, I'll create a raster layer for the color, and then another to add some shading. In this case, changing my shading layer into a clipping layer means it will only shade where the color appears on the layer underneath. Finally, I'll create one last raster layer above the pinwheel folder, and use it to make a little white highlight on the center of the pinwheel. And with that, our pinwheel is done. But why did I put that last layer outside of my pinwheel folder? Well, in the next video, I'll be animating the pinwheel to demonstrate easy 360-degree rotation, and I don't want the highlight to spin, too. Stay tuned for that video, coming soon. Otherwise, tag me at Ms. Red Nebula on socials to show me your pinwheel designs. I'll see you soon. Bye! A big thank you to all of my patrons, with a special shout-out to Novatier patron Joe C. Phipps. Check out my Patreon if you'd like to help support future content like this.